welcome to the Universal Audio booth, where I have the great distinction of being able to interview Jakir King here, who's gonna, who's a, a, a badass, technical term, music producer and mixer, and who's gonna show us some of his work, namely the track from a band called Kaleo, track called No Good, which is a big hit that he produced. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the session from that track and pick up where we left off from the 1 p.m. session. Who was here at the 1 p.m. Uh, interview? All right. So we have a, yeah, of course you were there. You're supposed to be here. You're working here. Uh, anybody not working here who so was here at 1 p.m.? OK, good. Great. So we're going to pick up where we left off. But first, let's go back to the session. So for those of you who were, you know, elsewhere earlier, shame on you because you, mixed, uh, you missed Jakir tweaking the drums, the, the acoustic drums, and actually comparing a real B15 amp with a DI and, uh, with the UAD B15 on. Maybe we can pick up from that yeah. DI thing. Sure. Hello. Am I, am I on? OK. Yeah, yes. cool, cool. Um, was that it? Yeah, maybe okay. we can, um, for, those of, uh, for those of them who missed the beginning, uh, maybe we can listen to the amp and the DI and sure. compare. So uh, what we were doing before is I was just doing a little bit of work to um, balance and, and EQ the drums. And then we, we went on to the bass. Um, and I was, um, I was explaining that there's a, uh, there's a bass amp track, um, which was recorded through an Ampeg B15, which is uh, you know, this, this amp. And so just out of, out of curiosity, I, um, because this is just a clean DI, I put the uh, the amp emulation on the, uh, the the DI, so we could just kind of A B the sounds. Now they're not exactly the same, but the, you kind of hear the quality. Let's see. This is this is the bass sound as it's recorded with the two elements with the drums. So this is just the the amp. Oops. And then this is just the DI. Can you hear the difference between a DI and an amp? And so this is the amp emulation. Obviously got a little bit of difference in the volumes, the gain. There you go. Pretty wild, right? So comparing a, d a real amp and a DI with a UAD amp on it. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, this is really nice. Um, Great. So, um, so I was, uh, before I was working on doing a little bit on the drums, I'll just kind of review just really quickly. Yeah. So um, I put an SSL channel on the snare drum, it's sort of the here, we'll just like the before and after. I'm not going to solo up all the drums. I'm just going to solo up some of the more primary stuff. Just kind of brightening the snare, but you know, you can also hear how it affects the kick drum. So that's, that's without know. the without the SSL on the snare. That's with. Yeah. And then I just I put a 560 EQ on the bass. I mean on the bass drum. With just kind of tighten it up, give it a little bit more punch and, and articulation. And then on the overheads, I uh, just rolled off some of the low end and yeah, it definitely makes things yeah. darker. Yeah, there's so many stops in this song. Yeah, there are. You know, it's kind of it's kind of cool. The song is definitely way under four minutes. Uh -huh. uh, but it has so many twists and turns, and the drums come in and out of the arrangement. It's, it's great. It's kind of a cool yeah, throwback arrangement. I haven't heard anything like that on radio in a while. No. It was great. Um, OK, so the next thing, you know, uh, next thing I wanted, wanted to do along this, and we just kind of kind of, let's see what's going on in this same pattern, I think. This section is just kind of the best because it has like symbols and stuff yeah. in it. Um, so you had some. Um, so you tracked them live. Yeah. 
So uh, Jakia tracked the band live, cut a bunch of takes that he liked together into one master take, and then you started doing uh, programming to that. So, uh, a lot of the programming existed before. Okay, so it was in the demo or something. Yeah, we, I be, um, yeah but it had to be arranged uh, to the performance. You know, there was yep. a lot of elements that we had. So I'm going to just play you just the... Uh, So this is the programming that's underneath that you're hearing in the in the the, re the record mix the final. So these these are now programmed drums. They're no longer the real drums. Where's Alex? There you go. But it's a lot of the weight of the kick drum. Yeah. Yeah, the, all that energy comes from there. So let's see. Let's let's do this. So y these came from the band. No, you you did this stuff that I did. And how did you synchronize the hits from? Because how do you make sure that the the hits from the electronics and the hit from the real drums lined up good enough that it didn't hurt you, uh, phase wise? Uh, well, y uh, in this case, I adjusted the drums a little bit. The most critical thing is like kick drums, like yeah. the, like the kick and the snare, the primary things. I tightened the drums up a little bit on this, um, but uh, it's also important to have sounds, you know, like like this sound. It has kind of like this kick drum sound that's reinforcing has a lot of weight to it. Yes, but it doesn't have as much point as yep. the actually drum kits kick drum has, and so it's not it's not fighting and flaming. This is just kind of more about reinforcing the low end, and so it's not as critical that they're like super super tight with each other. Um, Just another kick drum. Well, that one's fat. See, that's playing a different pattern. It's emphasizing a different part of the, the, the drum pattern. I bet you you didn't hear this when you heard the single on the radio, right? You didn't pay attention to that. So another thing is, is like this, this stomp sound that you hear in the in the breakdown and the yep. bridge later. This is the programming version of it, but we did. But so, but we set up um, we set up a um, a wooden platform that we put m a microphone underneath, and then we took that microphone into a guitar amp, and then we mic the guitar amp, and that's because we wanted a very filtered old sort of sound, and that that's that's what that's what that component is. So they're they're stomping and and clapping to the song, and it just goes along with this. That's nice. You know, the samples are what the samples are kind of like what's adding a lot of weight to to, um, to the the acoustic instruments. You know, because if you put it all together, yeah, man. A lot of it's not programming for the sake of. Um, uh, replacing it's programming to enhance and fill the holes. Yeah, it's very discreet. It's very nice. Um, and you know, and and so we have you know claps. Uh, though I guess those are performed claps. Um, but then you know, it's just like there's all these guitar tracks. But then like there's a mood like. You, there's a mood track. I'm just going to show you some of the other elements that are sort of programming bits that go with. So you have a synthesizer that's doing the guitar riff. Because if we listen to... Oh, where are those guitars? Those are not the right guitars. Subtle. No, oh, thank you. I'm not sure what I'm hearing sometimes in here. <laughs> So that synthesizer is there to kind of like be a companion for the guitars. Um, That's wild. What else can I? What else can I show you quickly? I want to know what the Moog is doing. Uh, it's. I'm pretty sure it's in the solo. 
Where, the, where is this? Uh, it's a little bit in blue. This guy. Ah, uh, yeah. Whoa. Oh, it's playing a sub. It's playing a sub thing. So that's on the bass. Mm -hmm. It's helping the bass out. Yeah, for sure. Very nice. All right. So just like the arrangement of the instruments is underpinned with a lot of things that just make it sound, you know, just sound and give it a little more weight and, and depth. So those guitars, when you track the band live, you had the, the trio. Yep. So there was one guitar pass. Which guitar well, did you choose? four of them. So yeah, the oh, two, guitar, four. two guitar players. Guitar players. Okay. Uh, so those were all done live. Uh, not exactly. Okay. I they mean, live-ish. Live-ish. The next you know. thing to live. Yeah. I mean, we took the ba we recorded the band as a you know as a four piece. Yeah. Um, but then we uh, so you a couple guitar play couple, couple guitar elements we completely replaced replaced with different sounds. Okay. You know because we uh, we didn't get uh, all the the sound that we wanted for a particular section or part on the off the floor. But then some things some of the basic rhythmic elements were kept. Just try to record as much of a performance as possible, and then kind of fix it up from there. Okay, and then you layer the extra guitars on top of that. Yes, and then there's extra guitars uh, layered in, and then so the synth is kind of supporting as a um, as a rhythm guitar sound. Um, all the background vocals. But you know, there's the, there's in the in these programming stuff. There's there's claps. There's program claps. Oh yeah, on top of the real claps, and then supplemented with real claps. And so the real claps, you know, they're it's people clapping together, so it's a little flammier. So the yeah. the sample is really predictable and like a loop, and is very yeah. very forceful and clear. And then the the you know the added performance to it kind of yeah. gives it a, a little bit of a loose, vibe, you know. I think dynamic. Our, our collective ear has been used to fake claps. Yes. So when you try and record real claps, it never quite does it. <laughs> no. Like it's really hard to record a real set of claps, no matter how good the players are. Even the old, people always ask the drummer, and the and the bass player or the drummer, the percussionist, to record the claps. No, ask the singer. Because the drummer and the percussion player never clap. They're busy playing. <laughs> right. But a singer, she's got nothing to do. She knows how to clap. So I always ask a singer. But even if you do like 10 tracks with the singer, you never quite get that sound. You know, the 808 ruins it for everybody. Uh, but this is cool to do the hybrid of the two. Yes. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of talk about, and, I, you know, actually, I, um, I could pursue the drums a little bit more. Yeah. Now that we have we'll put, it, put it together. But also, I want to spend a little bit of time um, on the with the vocal. Just, yeah, of just, course, just, of course. We have because there's a little a little more time. If I don't know, have any of you gone down to the the demo, the software hardware demo, and check that out? Show of hands. How many of you guessed everything right? You yeah. guessed everything right. He gets a pom pom. If I had a banana left, I would give Good it to deal. you. Good deal. Nice. I didn't even guess everything right. I didn't even. I went down there and I didn't get everything right. Right. I don't. I haven't been there yet, but I will go. But but the um, so anyways so that whole that whole sort of uh, project that we did that experiment was sort of a, as a result of from recording this song uh, because um, and I, and I'll explain why in a minute okay yeah so sorry sorry to jump around on you let's go back to this riff section. So we don't have, you know what, let's put a little. Yeah, that's, your, that's your drum bus. Oh, it is. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's duplicate this. So what Jakir is doing is he's looking at the bus that's um, receiving all drums, right? So all the drums are bus to one stereo pair, and he's duplicated that stereo pair. And then what are you going to do? I'm going to. I'm going to put a, uh, a 1081 EQ on all of it, like a Neve EQ. On just one of the two? Well, I'm, I'm going to duplicate it to the other one. OK. We're, we'll, but we'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to just, so this is an a overall drum kit EQ that I'm going to do. I'm just going to open the top end up a little bit. Just 
give a little bit of articulation. Yeah. And this is on the real drum kit, as you can hear? Yes. Just a, it's a, the approach is really just trying to find like a, a simple overall EQ that kind of enhances it, opens the drums up, enhances, and, and um, kind of tightens the mid range up a little bit. We'll see. You know, we're gonna put this in a see if a hundred or it sounds nicer. The frequency a little bit higher on the low end because we have all that low end reinforcement yep. from the samples. It's really thick. Okay, so bypass it. Anything better? Yeah, it's making it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this EQ over here, right? So I have the same exact uh, EQ sound, and then now we're going to we're going to do our parallel compression on the duplicated bus. On the duplicated bus. So Jakir is making sure that it has the same EQ on both buses because. Um, a, it's not, uh, first, it's, it's nice to know that you're starting your parallel compression with a sound that you like. Yeah. Also, f in my experience, from the bottom, if the EQ is not the same, you start to have phase shift, and that's a nightmare. So if you're going to do parallel compression uh, and you're going to EQ one of the two branches of the parallel compression, make sure that you EQ the same on both sides. Otherwise, you will have a really hard time making it sound good. Yeah. I mean, especially with drums, because drums yeah. are already a, 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 a frequency mess. phase mess. Yeah. Okay, so now because this is parallel compression, we can let's be let's be aggressive with it. Um, we'll you know kind of let's turn the ratio up. And, but we're gonna go with a fast release. Let's see. So we're just gonna blend some of this in. We're not gonna. So what you're seeing Jakir do is is very much compressing the drums on this bus in ways that he probably would not compress a direct bus. And he's tucking that back under a little bit. Can you hear the amount of energy that that's bringing into the, the room right away? That's what the compressed bus sounds like on its own. It's very kind of, kind of mangled and smashed. Yeah. Let's try some different ratios. See, that, that, to me, that, that lower ratio is kind of letting the kick drum like bloom and speak too much. It's, it's not smashing it enough. That sounds nice. We'll go even further. That's potentially usable too. It's pretty aggressive. You know, at that higher ratio. So let's direct sound. And now tucking in the compressed so, sound. You so can I'm see it there. Blending it in. So let, we'll just compare these two. I like that really tight smash. Yeah, it's good. So you saw how you got a good drum. This was a great drum recording, right? And it sounded good. But the minute you start adding this extra energy, that's when it starts sounding like a record, more like a record. The reason for that is that most records use these techniques. And most modern records. And this is a very, I mean, uh, I, uh, this is a very simple approach yep. to, to the parallel compression. I mean, sometimes I will parallel compress the kick and the snare together. Uh, maybe sometimes put the toms into that and then blend that into this combination here. Um, sometimes the rooms, I give them their own flavor of parallel compression. You know, I might, um, on the rooms, I might use a distressor um, or, you know, there's all, all kinds of different choices. Just find the thing that's accentuating the sound the best. Um, how much more time do we have? We have enough time to show you vocal thing. Okay, great. Okay, that's, that's what I was wondering. Okay. Um, okay, so. Pay attention, this is very interesting. Okay, so the story of this vocal, yeah, here it is. Okay, um, is that the lead vocal? Just looking at the so. timeline. I think so. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we um, we recorded this vocal with an SM7, a 1073, and an LA2A. The, the hardware, the hardware. Um, but it got at a certain point, um, JJ, who's this, uh, the singer, there was some stuff that he wanted to work on vocally on the road. He, he's a, he's a singer. Some singers, like, they're good with one or two takes, and that's great. JJ's a little bit more, he likes to sing a lot more and try to find the nuance and, 
And so he had to take this recording on the road. You know, so I'm like, well, listen, man, let's, let's get a situation for you where if we possibly take this on the road. So I said, let's, uh, let's experiment. So we got an, an SM7, another SM7, and um, an Apollo twin. And I, and I duplicated the, the hardware settings uh, with a 1073, like a, in the unison, and an LA-2A, and um, so that he could go on the road and record. And we and we we ended, we bought an, an SM7 that was a slightly different model because of the impedance and the way that it sounded. But so in the end, this vocal has it's a composite of the the analog hardware and the unison technology. And we'll just we'll listen to it on solo. And I don't remember where the pieces are, uh, but I guarantee you by the time we get um, through the first verse, you've at least heard at least a few of them. So, do you guys all understand that? Let me, let me, let me repeat that. Jakir was tracking in a, in a studio at, at Blackbird, right? Yeah. With an SM7, which is, oh, it's gone, which is right that there. Shure microphone, it's 300 bucks, it's great vocal mic. I said, an SM7, a real 1073, and a real LA 2A. The singer wanted to do more work. Jakir, tell him, buy an Apollo Twin. And Jakir did the work to match the sound between the hardware and the software using a, ten, a software 1073 and a software LA2 as a UAD plugin in real time. And this record, on this vocal you just heard, this first verse, some of the phrases are from the hardware and some of the phrases are from the software. Are we all clear on that? All right, play yeah. it again. Yeah, so, so in doing that... Don't let them all break you. You're going to have to tell the crowd. Won't you. It won't do you no good. It won't do you no good. Well, we still got the stomps you know going, I don't we? So when you hit me right, you know you might as well. It won't do you no good. Said it won't do you no good. And I said, kiss your baby. So that that was the that was the inspiration for the the hardware demonstration that's down there. The the session that I did with Jamie Dill Liddell in the studio to sort of like prove and see. You know, I was very curious. as like, well. If, if we do it all from scratch with all Unison technology and Apollos, how, how close is it going to be? How, how good is it going to get? That close. Is that pretty wild? I think it's pretty wild. Uh, I, I've just been told I have to make a, a public service announcement. If you could manage to like kind of tuck in and get closer and feel the love, feel the love. Because the, um, the good people at NAM do not enjoy when the aisles are blocked, which I understand. And so be brotherly get close to each other, move in. I will say I'm glad we have such a turnout that this is an issue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, this is great. This is great because it's a real-life um, example of the whole debate, hardware versus software. Yep. Some people buy a lot of hardware just because they feel like they have to. You don't have to. You don't, uh, have, to. You don't have to. I mean, you know, they're, two to, they're, not, they're not... It's either... They're equal. Exactly. That's... It's it's a it's a workflow thing, uh, in in it's sometimes it's great to be able to go touch knobs, uh, in a, a live session. But if your budget is small and all you can afford is an Apollo and a few plugins, you can make records that sound like that if you spend the time learning the skill. So these tools, especially the tools that that UA are providing, are just mind-boggling, and their power is amazing. The reason why I'm stressing this point so much is because the number one question I get from everybody around me is like. Dude, you know, is it as good as, or you know, is it good enough? I'm like, it's good enough for you. It's good enough for Kaleo. Yeah. It's good enough for everybody. It it is. Look at that wall. I, I mean, all those records were made with U80 and were made with Apollo. That stuff is amazing, and it's not because you can afford it that it's not great. You can afford it, and that's great. You know, that's the thing. It's it's up. It's it comes down to what you want for yourself for a process. And you know, and then it's all about your creativity. I mean, you know, you go listen to that. Judge for yourself. To you know, decide. You know, it's, uh, they're both of equal value. But it the and I wasn't. You know, it's like I didn't do it to, to sell a product. I did it to just sort of demonstrate that. You know, tell you can you tell the difference? And, and also, and, and is it that big of a deal? It's also a great problem solver for you. You have a great record. It, he was able to do it on the road. It yeah. probably would have taken forever for him to come back to the studio and do another take. Yep. Scheduling is crazy. This is amazing. This is amazing. Yep. So th this song is nominated for a Grammy too. Well, no Sunday. Yeah. Amazing. Congratulations.
All right, so this is Jakir King, who was kind enough to come share his process, part of his process with us uh, on the Kaleo track, No Good. Thank you so much for watching.